Now, somebody a couple of weeks ago was showing us the turning a spindle um, or, or, or a piece of stock round, and they were using a drive center, uh, a, not, not a barbed drive center, a bulb tailstock center, I'd call it, but they had that in the drive head, and they had a revolving center and a tailstock, and would turn those two points. This guy emailed me the other day, it's Daryl. Um, it's either Daryl or Donald. Um, about how can you possibly hold a piece between those two centers? And I said, it's called friction. What? I said, you can't hold it there. And it's Absolutely. if you're doing production work, it might be one of those quick things where you don't have to put them in a chuck or fool around with that. You got you, you stab two points and go. It might be a way to rough the wood out. Uh, I I did it one time roughing out a a, a hat blank, and um, just because somebody told me I couldn't do it. And uh, but if you're doing it, if you're uh, how long, if you're shaping something up, and you need stock that's fairly straight, if you clean it down with that, and you can see the grain of the stock, you can adjust your center point to get that back spinning horizontal or even, and that, that might be a sneaky way. Anybody got any ideas on that? Uh, yeah, they call that uh, a uh, up style center uh, for the headstock. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's not a step yeah, center. It, there's no teeth. No cup, C U P. Cup. I'm sorry. Pardon me. Yeah, um, and other people have other names for it. I, I was looking at that myself this week, and somebody has a different name for it. But there's, yeah, Robust sells a cup style drive center. Um, and that's what they call it. it. I've used. I've I used... refer to it as a safety center. Okay. Yeah. It could yeah, be. But, you're, but yeah, you're right. It's it's basically just a you know pressure and and friction fit. Right. It used to be what they used back in the old days before they had a bearing tailstock center. I bought them from Sears. I, in fact, I bought all they had. They they were like four ninety eight. I bought twenty of them. I think. Well, they're still on sale. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> Half price yeah. now. I bought everyone's ears head. I've got a 60 degree drive center that I use when I'm turning pins because I turn pin I, I turn between centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I use in 60s when I do yeah, one way one way sells one also. It's they also call it a cup drive. Axminster sells one, they call it a ring point tip. You know, the Brits, they gotta be different. So mm -hmm. Lots of different names for it. Oh, that's right, Robert. He does. Robert says Alan Lacer mentions how he 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 takes those cup centers and files a couple of spots across them so that it gives it a little bite. But doesn't that like defeat the purpose? I no, it's not. it still works as a safety center. Okay. It just doesn't slip quite as much. Makes sense. Uh, Billy, you turn when you turn pens, you run the tubes between centers. Yes, sir. Yep. I put the. Uh, I, I used uh, well for for seven millimeters, uh, like slim lines. I use. I have a special made um, bushings that I can put between my sixty degree centers, and but for all my others. I just use the regular standard stock bushing and I just put them between 60 degree centers and they work just fine. I have gone so far as to chuck those, some of my bushings up and use a, uh, a machinist center drill that's 60 degrees to cut a, a small 60 degree chamfer on the outside of the bushing so that it matches up with the 60 degree drive and live centers. Mm. But I haven't done that on all of them. It's, I don't, I, I found it really wasn't necessary. Yeah. So Eddie, I, I, I turn when I do pens, I turn nothing but between centers between the 60 degree uh, dead center and live center uh, to include trimming and facing the blanks. I use the skew 
and I'll, you know, instead of using a ring cutter, you know, to, to get everything yeah. down through brass, I, I use my skew and, and cut off the ends. And then I, you know, giddy up and, and, and cut the, the blank, you know, solely with the skew. That'll work, Dave. And then when I start getting close, I take my measurements off of the pen, the specific pen hardware, because there is variances and you can have five kits and they're all going to be off by some degree. And wow. so for that specific hardware, I transfer, you know, whatever that, that caliper dimension comes out to be, that's what I work to on the final turning off the lathe. And you guys are talking 60 degree centers. Are those cones? No, they're, they're pointed, 60 degree pointed they're centers. Pointed. Standard 60 degree live center and a 60 degree drive center. Yep. So this is, there's my dead center. Yeah. 60 degree. Oh, okay. And then, okay. And then up. Well, it's a cone, it is a cone on the end, though. Okay. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's um, you can. Pointed. And I got mine from Little Machine Shop, but you can get them all kinds of places. And the same thing with the, the live center that I've got on my tail stock right now. Um, it's yeah, the, well, thanks for showing thanks for showing me that guys that I appreciate that yeah you're welcome and so it's the it's the same way yeah, it's a 60 so, that, so then so how do you marry that up to the to the the pen fixtures then well Dane said he doesn't he just I turns to specs but yes. I just I put I put the bushings in the tube just like I normally would and then I chuck those and I chuck at bushings and all in between those centers Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And, right, I got and, it. and the reason that I started doing that is because this was before, this was before the days of the, of the mandrel saver. And I kept getting, because you, you have a tendency, mandrels have a tendency to warp or flex. And yeah, true, true. And because most people think, oh, I need to tighten it some more and they're tightening it on the wrong spot. So, yeah, so what they end up weird. doing is, is putting warp in that mandrel. I mean, in it, cause it, it warps really easily and instead of cranking down on the knurled knob, like you're supposed to, but that's what the, the mandrel saver has come in and taken the place of all of that. So you don't quite get as much flex, but I still find that I get a degree of eccentricity. Yep. I know I'm a pretty eccentric guy, but I get it. I get it. I did a, I get a degree of eccentricity using a mandrel that I don't get when I'm turning between centers because I get a concentric pen blank every time. Absolutely. And, and so like, you know, you'll hear, you'll hear folks say, oh, you can't do it between centers with, without the bushings yeah, you um, because you can't hold the pen, you know, with, with the bushing in the blank, you can't hold it tight enough. <laughs> Well, if you're if you're using good technique with your tool, whether it's a skew, roughing gouge, spindle gouge, or even a bowl gouge, you literally the, the amount of pressure that you need to tighten it down with, you're still able to turn that live center. If you've got it tighter than that, then you're going to mushroom out the brass. Right. But, you know, it's just like an oil filter on a vehicle when you're changing your oil filter. You don't crank yeah. it down with, with a lot of power. It says hand tight and then go a little bit more. That's it. And it's the same. It's the same with a pin between centers. For those that, you know, that you know, like myself that choose not to use uh, bushings or modify the existing bushings that you have, you know, you know of course, there's a couple places out there that provide um quality good bushings uh for turning between centers that you yep. put between uh your dead center and your life center that go into the blank like those that are used on the mandrel but again that's another piece of equipment that's going in that's going to cause some amount of essence in, um century of the pin blank being out around and, and marrying up perfectly with your pen hardware. Yeah, and I and I have overcranked that knurled knob. I mean, to the point where I got 
they did damage to the bushings too. So yeah, you know, they weren't they weren't the same size they should have been when I was done. So right. things you learn. Yeah. And then of course, you know, your bushings are, you know, for the say, you know, for those that, you know, have to do a little bit of sanding, it's inevitable that you're gonna you're gonna hit the sandpaper on those bushings. And of course, you know, that's gonna reduce the outside demand uh, diameter of the bushings. And so especially point, if you start with a coarse grit gee yeah especially for those that start at the 60 and 80 you know that have the 60 and 80 grit gouge so i said i seldom practice. start yeah and it it takes me just a little bit longer because i'm doing two blanks at a, and i'm not doing two blanks at a time you know on the same mandrel i'm using one and then the other but it's not that much longer and no and good good to be honest i seldom start sanding a pen blank with anything coarser than than 180 yeah well probably because you're slicing the wood yep i yeah. try yeah 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 i um you know i'm, I'm not going to do and brag or anything you know but you know it's it's probably 320 that that i'm hitting that well, usually it's 240 because I'm turning with my skew. Right. Well, exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I was getting ready to follow it up. You know, because that last cut, you know, the dreaded last cut. Right. Freshly and, you know, not honing it. I'll go put it on the 600 CBN and, and then I'll go and put that fine shaving down that final dimension. And, of course, when I first started years ago, that last cut really, really stunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, to all of us. <laughs> yeah, Famous yeah, last words. Yes. Especially on but a boat it, it, it's a, But that last cut, it's a mindset. Because you're thinking, oh, just one last cut. And then you're thinking about failure. We ha What we have to do is start thinking, oh, this last cut is going to make a fabulous surface that I don't have to sand. Exactly. And it, all, and it all starts with taking your time and making sure that you have a nice, fresh, sharp edge. Yep. Well, and one other thing, guys, if you practice that last cut all the way through the turning process, that last cut becomes Bingo. a whole lot easier. Bing, Bingo. bing, bing. There's the winner right there. <laughs>